Hi guys, Russ here from Wilson Land and Cattle Company. Today we're going to talk about setting fence. This is a topic that comes to me quite often uh, doing grazing consultant work. So I'm going to do, I'm going to try and help you out with some of the tips and tricks and different things that we're using here on the farm to make us efficient at getting that fence set and getting her done. And if you would, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share with a friend. That that helps us out in the ratings in our videos and we get more views that way. Okay, let's get into it. Setting fence isn't that big of a deal, really. You're just basically you're just basically setting a fence, putting the livestock into a smaller area that's going to actually give you more rest on your soil, make your plants healthier, stronger, going to reduce disease in your system, you know, for your plants and your livestock, as well as your soil nutrient cycling is going to cycle better. So you, that's going to give more fertilizer to the plants, available fertilizer to the plants. So let's get into setting fence. We just use, I'm using mini reels. You can use the gear drill if you like. We're gonna set, set one with the side by side and then I'm gonna take you to a different location on the farm and show you how we set it on foot. I would say about, it used to be 100% of our fences were done on foot and we did it that way for four years, but we streamlined and went using the side by side. Scout, what are you doing? be very efficient setting fence on foot. I have, I have a few tips and tricks to show you there. You know, watch to the end. This here's for the seasoned grazer as well as the beginning grazer. I think there's something that, some, that you can learn. I use three different types of posts. I use the fiberglass sun guard post. It uh, is mainly used for bracing. I have the Gallagher ring, ring top post. This is new for me. I only have 10 of these. I kind of like them, but I'm just, I'm just not quite as efficient with them as I am the O'Brien post, which that's this post here. We use the O'Brien post for our sheep as well as our goats, and it works well because it has the, the multiple hooks on it. For the sheep and goats, we put it on the fourth one up and the sixth one up, and that just two strands that holds them in and we also use it for our hogs we start our hogs on the third one and then by the end of season we'll be up on the fifth one there's two types of reels that we use I would say 99% of the fencing that we do we, we set with the mini reel we find that it's light light easy to use I found that the time that I can save using a light a lighter reel makes up for using the gear drills. Now the gear drills are work great if you're running fence lines more than let's say 600 feet. Um, you know they work great for that but we don't even use them for that. When we when we go to our lease property we use mini reels. We just tie them together and, and, and set the fence and that's a mile and a half down there. So we set three and a half miles of fence using mini reels and we don't have any issues doing that let's show you how we we uh, set our fence whenever we first started setting fence with our livestock it took us an hour and a half to move the cows once a day and we've got it streamlined down to now to where we can move the cows four times in one day and an hour and a half, tear out, set, move the cows, and keep the water with them. We back fence everything here on the farm, and we keep water and fresh water in those paddocks with the cows at all times. We have a hook that we hang our reels on when we're setting on a side by side, and just pull it out. And tip number one that I have for you is whenever you set your hang your gate hook on your post make sure you put a post out just maybe a foot 
that way if a deer or something bumps this knocks this hook off your fence doesn't go on the ground it gets hooked there and I've I've had this help us or keep us from automatically automatically moving our cows several times Okay, we got our fence at the other end of the field. That only took maybe a minute. This here's pretty narrow. And we just, we put another post about a foot, a oh, foot and a half away from the fence like we did on the other end. Hang our reel on there. Tighten it up, latch it. What electric in it, we're good to go. One of the things, something else I wanted to show you here. Is whenever we're setting our posts, whenever we're setting our posts, we don't necessarily want it so it's parallel to the post because sometimes if a calf gets in there they can knock that out I turn that hook a little bit and then another thing that we do is we put it on the second one down for our cattle that way we can whenever we're tearing out we can just pull that out go like that we never even have to touch the the wire so that's pretty pretty simple let's go let's go set some fence on foot so we're gonna go set a fence and where the runs are a little bit shorter and be a little easier to see you over there okay this here's uh, a field that we just grazed here not too long ago and we're just gonna I'm gonna demonstrate how to to <coughs> set fence on foot i'm going to show you how to do two runs at one time and i'm going to show you how to just how normally uh how most people usually do it if they're doing it on foot okay doing it on foot this one here isn't going to require a lot of posts i'm just going to use half a dozen half a dozen posts and then a jumper scout we're gonna, I'm gonna do, <coughs> scout. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Go get me something to throw. This one here, I'm gonna show you how most folks set, set fence on foot. This here's some of my cheap fence. It's a, uh, fin tube insulator, a sucker rod, and it's just tied on there with, with uh, hand tied with 17 gauge wire. I think it costs five cents a foot to make that fence, so pretty cheap. Okay, again, always want that extra post in there about a foot away from the end. And then we're holding our reel and our, our jumper. We just walk. putting them about 16 paces apart that's gonna change depending on what how your terrain is how high the forges are the, 
the taller the forage is, the closer you're going to put your post together. The shorter the, the grass, the further apart you can put it. I have a couple extra posts and once you make one run you'll know how many posts you'll need per per uh, fence set it doesn't matter how far it doesn't matter if your posts are straight the cows don't care the sheep don't care as long as they have grass to eat we're there our jumper there we're good to go As you can see, fence is not straight at all. It is hot, it's off the ground, it, that's all that matters. Another thing that will dictate putting posts closer together too is if you have a lot of snow and ice. Snow and ice is gonna wanna put that closer to the ground. So let's go tear this back out. On foot. You see how I pulled that post, never even touched a wire? Now we're gonna demonstrate how to set two wires one go it's not much harder we'll start here oh what we need <clears throat> to To make this process work, we need a carabiner. We got two reels, we got two sets of jumpers there. We got our fence post. You just notice how all my fence posts are pointed in one direction. They're all grouped together there. They won't tangle up on you. Put that one on there. Now you can either hook your gate hooks in your pocket, or if you have a hammer loop in your pants, walk across here. Setting our fence. We're setting one run across, and then we're gonna set the other end when we walk back. I come up with this whenever we start a grazing or moving the cows four times a day. And this saves you probably about half of what, what the time it usually takes to set one run, if that makes any sense to you. So if you take the setting your run one time times it by two, it will only be take you one and a half times to put our post on. We're walking down here. You know, ever how, how wide we want our paddock. We have our, our wire. We clip that wire on our carabiner. That way it can slide. Who 
broke it on the fence there. And we walk back across the field. See how that wire just pulls across there and the grass can be really high before you have to worry about it catching. And probably one of the worst things for the wire catching on is like bull thistles, model flower rows, things like that. So it kind of gives you an incentive to go out there with a sickle before you start setting fence and cut them things down. Okay, we're back across. We unhook from our carabiner. Just tighten it first run up, set it, put our clips on it. Now there's gonna be a little bit of a loop in this, which is not a real big issue. wind it up wind it back to ever how wide you want to make your paddock make it hot there's two two runs or two runs of fence set by walking down, walking over a little bit, and walking back up. So that's that's how we set two, two runs of fence. I want to show you how to make an end in a quarter corner with temporary fencing. Let's say we have to fence something out, or um, a lot of times if I split a field in half with temporary fencing, I need to use a little better support, a little better support for the ends. So I use that. So we're going to show you how to do an end and a corner. Let's say we're going to fence the buggy out and we're going to come up to this wire here. Now naturally if we hook to that wire it's not going to be supportive enough. And we need something sub substantial. <coughs> Scout, are you saying hi? <coughs> Here. Now with this, making an end, we're gonna make an end right here, okay? And then we're gonna stick another post on top of the tang that comes out of the bottom there. And basically that's just a support post to keep this one from pulling out of the ground. And we take our support post and we hook it, hook it in that post just like that, okay? And we hook the black. We want to get around the black hook and the blue hook. Just wrap it two times. You're good to go. Now we're going to come up here and make a corner. In the corner, you need your bracing on a 45 degree angle from the, the fence. So here's our hook. We want it facing back 45 degrees. Put our post in. We're sticking another post on top of the tang. And then we're going to use our fiberglass post. Hooks in like that. Hook onto the blue hook. 
and the black hook and most generally that causes a little bit of friction in there now hold so you want your fence pulled up tight whenever you stick that in there and then we'll just come up to our fence with our reel come up to the fence with the reel hook it on there then just make it hot just another view of how this is set you can see I can really I can pull pretty good on that makes a really good end really good end and a really good corner that's how we're doing our ends and corners we have very very little troubles with them cow a deer whatever they have to hit that pretty hard in order to knock them out so there it is two posts and a fiberglass we wrap it around hook it on there or hook it on our hook wrap it around hook it on our hook come up here in our other corner we have our fiberglass post on 45 degrees it's 45 degree angle here and then we make sure we wrap around both hooks and then we come up and end our corner. Okay, let's say we want to set a temporary fence or set, make it a temporary gate in our reels at the other end of the field. Most generally what we do is we just go reel that back and the cows would move on that side there. But let's say the cows are hanging out on this side and you don't really want to walk them across that to that side or if it isn't feasible. Just take a post, hook it in there, spin it around, spin it. stick your post in the ground, make sure your tang's in. Okay, we spun our post, we spun our post around there, it's around there twice I guess. Most generally, there's enough play in your in your poly wire to do that. Just come down here, unhook it, just flip it back. You're good to go. Cows move. Fence didn't go down. A lot of times if your fence is down and they cross it, they get their feet tangled up in it and then you have a mess. Okay, the way you have your buggies set up or, or whatever you're using to get your fencing materials out into the field is gonna make a big difference for you as well as for timing. This here's a, just an aluminum basket. It's a generic basket. Um, I have three of them. I have three side-by-sides. I have three of them. They fit 16 mini reels perfectly. At any one given time, we have anywhere from 10 to 40 mini reels in the field at one time being used. So we like, I carry 16 mini reels with me. I carry four ribbons. The ribbons are for setting runs, primarily for the calves. Cows don't need them so much. Then we keep our jumpers up here and then I have have my posts in the back then over here we have our our fiberglass posts and then I carry a couple steel posts and I just put this geared reel in reel in there for you to look at um, I personally don't carry a geared reel with me it's just it's just excessive weight. I it's just way too much weight for me. I don't like it. The time that you make up reeling those reels in, using the mini reels, it outweighs the good geared reel every time. And then we have our hose hose reel on the back, shovel for digging in the soil if we need to dig anything, toolboxes. And we have other stuff in here okay guys hopefully so anyhow give us a thumbs up comment and like we'll talk to you later have a good one